10 shaders in 10 minutes. Ready? Let's go! 1. Inverted Hull Outlines Outlines are much harder to do than you think, and many of the best techniques require post-processing and lots of in-depth considerations and performance trade-offs to get the effect looking just right. The inverted hull method, on the other hand, can give you quick results that work alright on rounded objects, although not as much on flat surfaces. We take the vertex position of the object and add an offset along the vertex normal in object space. In the fragment stage, we can just use block colour for everything. To invert the hull, which means only rendering the back faces, Shadergraph requires us to tick two-sided to render the front faces anyway, and then we can make the front faces invisible by ticking alpha clip and using an is front face node inside a branch to clip away those front faces. That leaves us with a material that we can attach in any object's second material slot to see the outlines come to life. 2. Dissolve Dissolve is one of those effects that showed up a lot when Shadergraph was first released, because it's a great showcase of its capabilities. With this effect, parts of the object fade out from one end to the other, typically with a glowing edge. We can wire up a base colour and texture like this, then tick alpha clip in the graph settings because that's what we'll use to cut out the object. We generate a Perlin noise pattern using the simple noise node and add that to the object's position then use a step node to cull pixels based on that value along one axis. If we use a threshold property for this and change its value, we see that the object fades in and out. To add the glow, we can use a similar step threshold with a higher value, invert it with one minus, and then multiply it by an HDR-enabled colour and connect it to the emission output. 3. Dithered Transparency This was the subject of my very first video on this channel two years ago. Rendering transparent objects is a bit more expensive than rendering opaques, so it's useful if we have a technique that looks transparent but actually uses opaque rendering. Since opaque objects typically write depth information, that means we can get a slight performance boost by culling anything behind the fake transparent objects, and we avoid having to do any alpha blending. You're probably not doubling your frame rate with this technique, but hey, any gains are useful. This effect uses alpha clip, just like the first two. We leave the surface type as opaque, then wire up a base colour and texture like usual. This time, we will split the result and wire the alpha components to the graph's alpha output. Then, we can add a dither node, which generates a repeating 4x4 pattern of grayscale values in screen space, and use it in the alpha clip output. Behind the scenes, Unity will cull any pixel whose alpha value is below the corresponding alpha clip value. Attach the shader to an object, and watch as the object fades out when you lower the base colour alpha, despite the object being fully opaque. 4. Silhouette Many objects write depth information to the depth buffer, which is used by Unity behind the scenes to make sure the nearest object to the camera gets rendered over anything behind it. After all opaques have been rendered, Unity makes this information available to our shaders inside the camera depth texture. As long as we're rendering a transparent object, will have access to depth information. To use it in URP, you have to find your renderer asset and tick the depth texture box at the top here. Then in Shader Graph, we can access it with the Scene Depth node. If we use Linear 01 mode, this outputs the depth, where 0 is the closest possible distance to the camera, and 1 is the furthest possible distance away from the camera. If we use that in Alert node to pick between foreground and background colours respectively, then output to base colour, we can use this material in a game to visualise the depth of any opaque object behind it. Just remember that transparent objects won't show up. 5. Scene Intersections A lot of games add some sort of effect to parts of objects that intersect other bits of the scene. For example, you could add a glow to an energy shield, or add foam to water where it intersects the beach. There's lots of directions you can go in, so in this section, I'll show you the intersection detection technique with perfection. We'll be using depth again, so take depth texture in the renderer asset and make sure your graph uses transparent rendering. We'll get the depth of the pixel that's already been rendered using a scene depth node in I mode, because in I space, each position is the number of unity units away from the camera. Then we'll compare that to the position of the pixel being rendered, which we can get with a screen position node in raw mode, then take the fourth component. But the result is a value that gets higher the further away you are from an intersection point, so we can one minus and saturate it to visualise the distance. 6. Dot Matrix 
With this effect, we can take the screen position of each pixel and render only a select few of them along a grid pattern like this. Each pixel uses emissive colour so it looks like the whole shape glows and we can configure the width of the gaps and the size of the dots. Enable alpha clip in the graph settings then wire up a base colour and texture like usual. I'll use a handful of nodes here to work out which pixels are dots and which ones are gaps based on their screen position and then multiply these values by the texture alpha for the graph's alpha output. Due to the alpha clip threshold, pixels with alpha below 0.5 get culled. Then I output to both base colour and emission to achieve that sweet glowing effect. You need to have a bloom post-processing effect set up to have the glowing, but the URP default scene handles that for you. 7. Stat Increases When playing Pokemon games, some moves increase or decrease your stats and you get this orange rising or blue falling effect overlaid onto the sprite. For this effect, which is a sprite unlit shader, I calculate UVs in what I call pixel space and scroll them over time in the Y direction. There's a lot of nodes, but this is all just for scrolling, and I am controlling the direction of the effect by inverting the UVs. Using those scrolling UVs, I generate a triangle wave and tile it in the Y direction, which involves a lot of remapping and modulos and adding and blah. I use these values to lurk between two colours and add those to the original sprite sample. 8. Portal Vortex Some games feature stylized portals like these in Crash Bandicoot 2. I'm feeling nostalgic already. This effect is great for any cartoony or stylized game. This is a transparent effect, so we'll need to tweak the graph settings accordingly. I'll first use a twirl node to twist the UVs around in a swirly pattern, then add a slight noise offset in case you want a bit of variation in the pattern. Using those UVs, I'll rotate them around the centre over time for some animation, then use those UVs to sample whatever texture you want. This graph makes good use of the nodes available in Shader Graph. 9. CRT TV Each pixel of your screen is made up of tiny sub-pixels which go off red, green and blue light respectively. In old CRT screens, these sub-pixels could be seen relatively easily if you decided to ruin your eyes and sit really close to the screen, like me. And yet, somehow I don't need to wear glasses. For this effect, we will use a base colour and texture like usual. Then we will divide the screen into tiny squares and use a secondary texture to assign red, green, blue and black to each bit of the square. I'm using black here to represent the gap between pixels. We will multiply the existing texture sample by these values so now each pixel on your screen now outputs only red, green, blue or black based on its position. Then I'll use a brightness property to adjust the values for a secondary emission output. There are better ways to handle brightness than a simple multiplier, but this is easier. The video compression is probably butchering the look on your end because this effect looks best at native resolution. 10. Vertex Waves We can create a convincing water wave effect using a vertex shader. With this effect, we'll use a noise pattern and add a small offset along the y-axis to the vertices of the water mesh over time so it looks like there are waves. We'll use the XZ position in world space and add an offset over time to use as the seed for a simple noise node. Since we're using world space, we can tie all the water meshes and the offset will be the same at the connection points. I'll remap those values so we can configure the size of the waves, then add it to the Y position of the vertex, this time in object space. The XZ position of the waves should be left alone and will output those three as a vector 3 to the vertex position output. We can just use a standard base colour and texture for the base colour output and if we put some planes in the scene, they will animate up and down over time. 11. The End I hope you are able to keep up. These effects were made available on GitHub and this video was made possible by my Patreon supporters who are flashing up on screen right now. You're all great. If you liked this quick fire video, check out this short video where I talk about the PS1's affine texture mapping. Thanks for watching.